Yeah. What's good y'all? Back at it again with another video. My name is Shadiq and then I locked into Crossover Media. Typically on this channel we review and react to UK music. However, we occasionally cross over into other kinds of content such as the tutorial that I'm about to walk you all through right now. This is just an opportunity for you to actually get to see how I make reactions, the editing process, just so you can see what it's like on the other side. If you are curious, every single thing that I use to make these videos is 100% free in terms of the software. And if you wanna learn what kind of equipment that I use, you can find all of that in the description down below. But listen, I don't wanna hold y'all too much longer. Let's get it. So the way that I always start editing my reactions is I have this template file, which is essentially just a file that has everything that goes in every single reaction video in the same place and all of that already laid out so that way I don't have to constantly keep adding these things every single time, updating the text and all of that. It's one file that never changes. And then I just import the actual videos that are gonna be used to make the reaction. And then I save it as its own file, as you can see up here. Normally this would actually be reaction template but i've already skipped the gun a little bit and i've gone and imported the videos that i'm gonna edit right here from here it's just to actually select the videos right so what i just did was i pressed shift in order to select multiple things right and i clicked on each of them and i dragged them right here into this timeline right so that was one of the files and then i'll drag the other one right here this is the screen recording and then the first thing that i do is i look for these spikes right here in the audio layer so these spikes are what i use to synchronize the audio with the video so as you will see later on depending on how many claps and where in the video i actually clap that tells me something about how i have to edit that particular part of the video then from there i just zoom in so i press control and then i use the wheel on my mouse or i could use this thing right here and also i didn't say it in the beginning but i use a program called hit film express this is actually the free version of HitFilm and it works perfectly fine. This is what I use to make all of my reaction videos. Every single thing that I use here is completely free. But then once I have the actual screen capture and the footage of me reacting imported into the video, I'm gonna hide the layer with the screen capture because what I do is I use a program called OBS which is primarily used for streaming but I use OBS to record my screen captures now but I also use it to capture the audio from the mic that I'm actually using to record this right now. I do have a mic attached to my camera, but the way that it sounds, I don't really like the echo too much. The mic that I use for the screen capture sounds way better. So I just use that audio. The main reason why I use the mic that's on my camera is so that way I can see these spikes and know exactly where to synchronize the audio from the screen capture. And also which is what's capturing my voice with the actual video of me reacting. So like I said, I hide the screen, I scroll in, and then I look for when my hands make contact. So boom, I go here. I just drag this layer until I hear the actual sound. Right, so you see, boom, I hear the sound. And now what you're about to see me do is I'm gonna unlink the audio from both of the respective video files. And I'm going to replace the audio that was coming out of the microphone and my camera with the audio coming from OBS and the screen capture. So now there's only one audio layer. And that's how I synchronize my audio. And then I go in, I just cut this right back down. And now that we have the video and audio synchronized, we just wanna make sure that we keep the video and audio linked. So you're gonna select both of them, right click and then click link. And now whenever you move one, the other will always move with it. We're just gonna go and edit the intro and then I'll be back later. Alright, so as you can see, I've already done my intro, so I don't even have to go back and watch any of this over because I see that I don't have any of these little audio spikes in this layer. That's how I know that everything here was a perfect take, so I don't have to go back and listen to it. I know that whatever it is I said, I'm satisfied with. Now, because I know that this was my intro, I know that whatever spike comes after this is going to be me actually playing the song. So once I see that there's some spikes and then I see the music starting to play, that's how I know that this is where the actual reaction starts. And I actually have a key, well, a button on my mouse that is a macro for control shift D which means that it helps me slice these things a lot easier but in hit film in order to slice a video you just 
you can right click on it and click slice and it'll slice it wherever the marker currently is or you can press Control shift and d and again it's going to slice it wherever the marker is so prior to this i would actually record my reactions in obs what it would allow me to do is actually do these reactions with the video on screen without me having to do all this editing so that way once the final video is done i import it and all i have to do is worry about cutting it up i decided to start switching to recording my reaction on my camera and screen capturing the music video on my computer because it gives me a lot more flexibility with the way that i can edit my reaction personally while not interfering with the music video so what that means is i then have to go in and actually resize the video and place it where i want on the screen now because i just recently started doing this i don't have the exact location that i always put it completely memorized so for the time being i'm just gonna freestyle it and just put it here just leave it roughly there. I can always go back a little bit later and adjust it, but that's just so I know that it's out of the way. And as you can see, now my reaction is gonna be independent of the actual music video. And then as you can see, I have all of these annotation boxes here where I update with information, right? So I leave it alone while I'm editing. I can always go back and update that information later on. Now before I even start actually editing the footage of me reacting, I go right into the segment where I'm actually doing my feedback and I can edit that without even having to hear it. I can actually mute this right now and I could go in and you'll see that I can edit this whole thing just based off of these claps right here. Wherever I have a double clap, that's how I know that this take is perfectly fine. And wherever I have, let's see if I have any examples. Wherever I have a single clap, that means that I know that it was bad. And wherever I have a triple clap, that means that I was doing fine until somewhere towards the end. So I just have to find the next double clap and then find out exactly where that statement ended and where the other statement begins, line it up, and then I'm good to go. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Something else that's also worth noting is that you're gonna notice that as I'm editing the audio, there's gonna be these spikes that show up. I'm gonna mute it so you can't see it right here. But they're gonna be these spikes that show up on the right hand side. I had this audio mixer. What I do is I pay attention to all of the levels when I'm recording. So that's how I make sure that if I'm editing anything, that it doesn't spike past where the audio is typically landing. The goal is for it to really hit below zero, but I typically aim for this negative six decibel range. I believe it's the decibels, but that's what I typically aim for so that way it isn't too overbearing on the ears. So if I go to the clap, you're gonna see that it's gonna spike really high. Now fortunately, it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna edit the claps into the final video, so I can go right back over here, give myself some wiggle room, slice, delete. And then now what's mostly left is for me to rearrange all of the graphics on the screen and then go back and actually edit the reaction itself. So by this point, a large chunk of the reaction is actually already edited. I leave this chunk right here open so that way I can put a little bit of a preview. And I have this transition cut just so that way I know exactly where I want the introduction part to cut off and where I want my voice to actually start when I'm doing the greeting for the video. At this point, I usually add the music. So what I would do is I would play a little snippet from the song, get a feel for what the vibe is, then I'll go into my media library and find a song that kind of matches. So if I know I'm listening to a really melodic song, I try to use a melodic beat. If I know I'm listening to a very dark and gritty song, I try to use a dark and gritty beat. After that, I'll typically adjust the volume of the track by dragging the decibel thing right here, which can also be adjusted on the right hand side right here with the mixer. but I I adjust it here and then I make a copy of it with the adjusted audio levels and I put that towards the end when I give my rating. So now I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you all another thing that I do when I have to extend the beat to make it ride out a little bit longer because the segment that I'm using the music for is longer than the beat itself.
So now that I've placed the beat here and I've color coded everything, so this is how I know that something with the audio was adjusted. Now I can actually go and try to find somewhere in the beat where it looks like the patterns of the spikes match. And then I'm gonna use that to line this beat up and extend it a little bit further. So it's really rough and it's not perfect yet, I could tell, but as you can see, now that I've actually dragged it, if you look very closely, you'll be able to tell that these spikes are actually very identical. So that means that the beat is gonna be very identical in that place as well. So I'm pretty sure that if I'm able to line this up perfectly, similar to how I line up the claps earlier in this reaction, I'll be able to get this beat to loop without a single skip. Now at this point, I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be perfect, so I'm just gonna run the beat back a little bit, let it play, and I'm gonna see if there's any noticeable skips in the beat while I'm talking. They harmonize, the way that they just put together the most playful lyrics and everything, that's where they really stand out to me. So having those elements to it, I was like, all right. And so after playing it, I can tell no skips, it's pretty much perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out, and then I can tell that the track goes way past after I'm done talking, and I've looped the beat perfectly. Now at this point, for all intents and purposes, the video is more or less done. I just have to find a highlight during my reaction to put in the beginning. If I wanted to, I could export this just as it is after I then go in and find all of these annotations that I have to update the information for, such as the score and anything else. And at that point, if I really wanted to, just to go in, find any places in the video that I want to edit, add an explanation or something like that. If it's a Sunday video, I completely disregard that. I just export it as it is. But because I'm going to be editing this one more fully, I'm going to then go in, listen to this track and while I'm listening to it I typically read the lyrics see if there's anything else that I missed download any pictures of Google or that I want to include if necessary and then that's pretty much it so now what you're pretty much gonna be watching me do is go in and add any annotations that I want and then I'm gonna export the final video Because I made a reference here that I actually want to go and put into the video, I'm going to eventually go onto YouTube, download the song that I'm referencing, and I'm going to inject it right here so that way you can actually hear and see exactly what it was I was talking about. All right, and I'm back, and now you can see that I have some files right here that I'm gonna be dropping in as B-roll. Again, B-roll is just any footage that isn't something that was recorded for the video itself, or in, this, or in this case, the reaction. So anything that I'm putting in where I'm gonna be talking or something like that while it's showing on the screen. So this is the B-roll, so I'm just gonna drop these where I know I have the gray, and I'm gonna come right back. So as you can see, I just have these effects in the top left corner that I keep dragging and dropping. I slowed it down right back to normal speed so you can see that I'm adding this demult effect. Essentially all demult does is it makes anything that's black um, turn transparent in the video. So that's the way that I'm able to take this video from YouTube and make it look like it was edited directly into my reaction.
yeah so pretty much for all intents and purposes this is the full edit so what i'm probably gonna do now is i'm just gonna skim through the whole video by dragging this slider and see if i can find any other moments that are kind of thumbnail worthy and then i'll bring it into my graphic design program i use a program called gimp and then just to keep it super simple so i don't drag this out any longer but i essentially make a copy of the previous thumbnail and then i would then import any of the screenshots that i took pick the one that makes the most sense i'll edit the text and then i upload the video and that's pretty much how i produce all of the reaction videos on my channel as of late let me know what y'all think about this video in the comment section did you enjoy it was it informative did you like find a newfound appreciation for reaction videos or creating content in general are you now empowered inspired informed to go and make your own content uh, do you think there's anybody who you know who could benefit from this kind of video? But in general, what other kinds of content do you want to see me do in the future? I know I have some vlogs that I want to edit and put up for y'all. I know people have been asking me for cooking videos. Some people have asked me about videos like about how I do my hair. You know, things like that. If there's any other kinds of content you want to see me cross over into, hence the name Crossover Media in case you were curious. You know, let me know what y'all think about that. And as always, hang tight for some more content. I do got more of that coming for y'all. But until next time, peace.